Hello, my name is Simeon Griggs and I develop WordPress websites under the business name Tomorrow. I called myself that because I needed a business name by Tomorrow. So this is a recorded version of a short talk that I gave at WordPress Brisbane in April 2018. And it's about how to add browser sync and SaaS to any WordPress theme. And if those terms confuse you, I suppose you're wondering why. And the, the answer to that one is quite simple. It's a matter of there are a lot of technologies outside of WordPress that can be really advantageous to us WordPress developers. But WordPress can at times be quite uh, insular and also it's easy to get comfortable with the tools that you are comfortable with. But if you are developing custom WordPress sites on starter themes, I think, and you, and you haven't used the command line or haven't looked for more advanced tools, um, you might get surprised by how much easier things can be. So I design custom WordPress websites uh, primarily as my job. I don't um, do any purchased theme installs or anything like that. So uh, a few examples of my work recently are this uh, really big membership website for our Tourism Darling Downs here locally. Also, this is soon to be a membership website for Beck Fox, a leadership coach here in Brisbane. And also I've done some work recently for the Northern Territory government with some recruitment marketing websites. All of these websites were built on a platform called Roots and Roots helps you build better WordPress sites faster. And that is true. Roots is also really complicated if you are not used to the, uh, the way outside of WordPress. I think these guys sort of had a look at everything else uh, out on the market and uh, everything outside of WordPress and tried to bring some really uh, high functioning fancy technology to the WordPress platform. And that scares some people and it excites some others. Uh, WordPress does kind of get looked down on, I believe, uh, outside of the WordPress community. And so these guys are trying to sort of whip it into shape. And I think they've got some reasonably strong opinions in some areas, uh, which are neither here nor there to me. But um, to get used to Roots, Trellis, Bedrock, and Sage, it is quite a, a leg up if, you, if you're not familiar with a lot of modern development tools. Um, and so I sort of beat my head against this really for about a good 12 months on my own, working out how it works. But now that I'm using these tools, I just can't go back. Uh, they have a starter theme called Sage, and um, they describe it if underscores is a 1,000 hour head start, Sage is a 10,000 hour head start. I'm not not quite sure uh, if you believe that or not. Uh, it's really up to you. But it is quite amazing just how much functionality this theme has in it for what is essentially a starter theme. Um, but what I'm going to show you in this talk is that uh, you can pull, you know, just bits and pieces out of these really high functioning themes and then use them in what you could call a dumb theme, like a, a theme that has no fancy functionality. You can put that functionality uh, into any theme, really. If you are scared of the command line, uh, like I was before all of this, you must do this course. So it's a free course, commandlinepoweruser.com. Uh, Where's Boss, this great guy, uh, put it together, sit through that, spend the time and, and really up your skills as a developer um, by getting used to the command line if you're not there already. So Browser Sync relies on, um, and a lot of web technology, modern web technology relies on something called Node.js. Full disclosure, I don't fully understand what Node.js does. I just know that it powers all of these really fancy tools. So you don't need to know what it does either because I use it and you can use it and neither of us have to understand it fully. Uh, you probably should, but uh, anyway. NPM is this package managing tool. It, it runs on Node.js. It pulls in all of these uh, utilities for us to use. Again, you don't need to fully understand these things to know that, hey, I'm going to install Node. And because I've got Node, I can use NPM. And because I've got NPM, I can pull in all these little packages like Gulp. Um, so Gulp will watch all of our files in this project and then it will do things. Really, that's what Gulp does. It, it watches things and it does things in a really simple explanation. And browser sync, I'm gonna use this one in particular. So this is just one of like a million NPM available packages. And we're gonna use browser sync here. So browser sync, what it does is it allows us to watch all the files on our computer in a project. Uh, and then it can reload our browsers. It can spin up a server to allow you to watch it on other devices on the same network or other platforms. So you can be testing Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, your iPads, your iPhones, all at once, all watching the same site, all scrolling together, clicking together. It's awesome. Once you've got this, you have no other way of doing business. So I'm gonna be using this theme called Blank Slate. Uh, and it's very simple and, and very basic. And uh, I don't actually use this one anymore, but it's a good one to show the power of you can take a theme that is 
as dumb as Blank Slate and turn it into something amazing. All right, so let's install Browser Sync and SAS into our WordPress theme. So we have a very blank theme here. Uh, I have this local de development environment running on MAMP, so nothing fancy. I've got this starter theme called Blank Slate, which uh, couldn't be less fancy if it tried. And what I'm going to show here is that if we install Browser Sync and SAS, it's going to speed up our development really quickly. And the great thing is because these two technologies have nothing to do with WordPress, you can use them outside of WordPress, you can use them on an existing website, you can use them on a new website, and it will really speed up your development process. And this guide follows along with a blog post that I have written, uh, which is more in-depth. So if you need some of these code snippets, it's all there on my blog, tomorrow.com.au. So let's start by uh, npm init. So this is going to start creating our uh, project and we can actually just hammer through all of those things. And yes, that's okay. Uh, we don't need to understand all of what we're doing here. I just wanna get you up and going so that then you can pull it apart later. So we've used npm to start this project. Now we're going to install gulp, gulp sass, gulp concat and browser sync. And we're gonna save them to the development version of the website. And so once we hit return on that, it's going to go through the process of installing all of those uh, utilities for us. Now that will take a few moments. Um, and in the meantime, we can set up our theme. So if we have a look at um, our code editor, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, which is getting pretty popular here. There's a few modifications we're going to have to make to this theme to get it uh, working with all of our uh, with all of these new utilities that we've put in. So you can download this gulp file.js and the cool part of all this is that you can actually move it theme to theme. Uh, so you can just start with this same JS file and copy it into a new project each time. Um, so what's it going to do? It's going to run browser sync and it's going to check for any changes in our SCSS files and our PHP files. So as we make edits to these, it's going to reload them in the browser and it's going to proxy this address. So this is the address that MAMP um, gives us to view this WordPress website um, and we're, it's going to create its own version of uh, of that server. And the great thing is that, as we know, if you're familiar with MAMP or a lot of local development tools, it's restricted to just your computer. But once Browser Sync is up and going, you can actually view the same files on your mobile device or inside of a, um, inside of a Windows desktop through Parallels or something. So you can be browser testing all your Mac browsers, all your PC browsers, and all of your devices all at once, which is really cool. So once Gulp is running, it's going to update um, the browsers, and that's what this section here is about. Um, it's going to check the, it's going to check for these CSS for SCSS files first, and then it's going to just throw in everything else. And the reason we're doing that is instead of writing one CSS file with a thousand lines, we're going to create multiple small SCSS files and it's going to pull them all into this one styles.css. It's going to be compressed or minified and it's going to go in the CSS directory. So what's the default task? When we're running Gulp, it's going to do everything we read above uh, and it's going to be watching those SCSS files while we're going. So again, more that we don't need to fully understand to appreciate the power of. If we check back in with... Um, uh, with uh, our install, so that's all done, which is great. So uh, now that we've got the gulp file going, we can go in and just go ahead and, and type gulp. So it's gonna run everything in that gulp file that we just had a look at. It's gonna spin up this server. Here's the address that works on our computer. Here's the address that you could uh, copy and paste into um, devices that you have on the same network. So your iPhone, your iPad, Android phones, all of that, and test them all at the same time. So what we need to do now is uh, we've got our live version here and it's going to continually check for changes. So we can go and open up the header and uh, blank slate's code is minified out of the gate. So um, you won't need to uh, pay too much attention to how horrible this is, but we can see if we start making changes to any file in here, uh, any of these PHP files, it automatically reloaded over here. So it just says hello world uh, in this H1 tag. But as we can see, nothing is styled at the moment. So we need to make a few other folders as well and a few other files. And so this SAS folder here that I've made uh, and we've got a main.scss file. So this is where we will start writing all of our styles. So we could write in that uh, the body is uh, background color. Uh, let's get a nice pale turquoise color there and hit save. And so what 
Gulp is doing now, if we go back and have a look at the command line, we'll see that it's actually watching those files and making changes. The only issue that you've got now is that it's made the CSS folder and it's made this styles.css and it's minified that code, but it hasn't actually updated on the website. And this is because at the moment, the website doesn't actually know to look for this CSS file. So the last thing I need you to do is go into the functions.php and I've got the code already pasted in here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to get the theme details and the reason I'm going to get that is so I can get the version of the theme. Um, sometimes it helps to uh, bust the cache occasionally. Uh, and that's why I'm going to put in here. So this WP and Q style, what this is going to do, to do, again, I've just saved that file and it's already loaded it in there. Uh, so this is going to enqueue that style sheet. So that CSS slash styles.css file. It's going to put it in there. It's going to put the theme version number in that string so that if we ever go into style.css and change the theme number, um, it will update the CSS file as well. And so here we see uh, that our new CSS is loaded. So the website's looking better already, isn't it? Uh, and so as you go then, we can start writing SAS, which is much easier than, or much more powerful than CSS. And every time we make a save to the, C the SAS files or the PHP files, it's going to upload in the browser. So we could go ahead and uh, you know, if you want to do some nested style, say uh, font size 20 pixels on that, uh, hit save and it's reloaded. We could say the font family is uh, sans serif save and that's already loading so as we go you can see that uh it's just going to make all those changes for us much nicer um i like a pale violet red for my links so already you're seeing sort of the power of everything here um that could do with some more padding that could be bigger so you can already see how as we're making changes, we don't need to you know, save this file, reload it, save this file, reload it. We also don't need to use a plugin to go and minify our code because it's already being minified as it's going into the website. But hopefully that proves to you and shows to you the, the power of using something like Browser Sync and SAS and how easy it is. Like I said, you could put this into a new theme uh, like I've done here, or you could go back and use an existing one. Uh, like I do on many of my projects, if I go back to one of my really old websites, and my WordPress themes that I've developed, I'll immediately see how much work it is to keep writing CSS and just convert it all to this and it's much easier to go forward.